Okay, so we are going to start with our 895 divided by 24 using our partial quotients algorithm. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw 895 divided by 24. What partial quotients is doing is using multiples that we already know to break down this number. So um, in this case, we're looking for how many groups of 24 can go into 895. So I'm going to do multiples of 24 that I'm familiar with. So for one, I'm familiar with 24 times 1 equals 24. 24 times 2 equals 48. I'm not so familiar with 3 or 4, so I'm going to jump right to 24 times 5 equals 120. 24 times, well, I'm not so familiar with 6, 7, 8, or 9, so I'm going to go to 10. 24 times 10 equals 240, and then 24 times 20 equals 480. These are the multiples of 24 that I'm familiar with. So they'll be the multiples that I use to the best that I can to break down this 895 more and more by using multiples of 24. So the first thing I'm going to do is the biggest multiple that I'm comfortable with is 24 times 20 equals 480. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as my first example. 24 times 20 equals 480. I'm then going to subtract 480 from 895. So I'm still left with 415. The next number that I know fits into 415 would be 240. Since I can't take 480 away from 415 without getting negative, my next best option to my knowledge is 240, which is 24 times 10. I'm going to subtract this to find that 415 minus 240 is 175. My next multiple that I could subtract from 175 is 120. 120 is 24 times 5. So 24 times 5 equals 120. I'm going to subtract 120 from 175 to find 55. I'm now going to look at my multiples that I know. 24 times 2 equals 48. This would be the next biggest number that I can take away from 55 without going into a negative. So 24 times 2 equals 48. And 55 minus 48 is 7. Since I don't have any multiples of 24 that would fit into 7. I know that this is my remainder. The next step that I'm going to do is add up all the multiples that I did. So these are all multiples of 24 that I did to break down 895 all the way down until I got 7. So in other words, this is how many groups of 24 actually fit into 895 equally. So I'm going to add all these up. My 1's column first, 5 plus 2 is 7. And my 10's column, 2 plus 1 is 37. This means that the answer when solving with the partial quotients algorithm is 37, remainder 7. All right, so now we're going to do the using long division algorithm with 895 divided by 24. So similarly to the partial quotients, we're going to write 895 under our division house thing and 24 on the outside because we're trying to figure out how many groups of 24 will go into 895. Typically when using standard algorithm, we work from right to left, but when we're using standard algorithm with division, we actually work from left to right. So, that being said, we're first going to work with this first value, 8. So 24, there's no way that there can be any number of groups of 24 that would fit into 8. So I'm just going to put 0. 24 times 0 equals 0. So we're going to carry down 
8 minus 0 equals 8. And now we're going to use our next value working to the right and bring that down 89. Now we're looking to see how many groups of 24 can fit into 89 to subtract. This is similar to what we did in our partial quotients algorithm. I say this because in the partial quotients algorithm, we were still multiplying by 20. So like the tens that we multiplied were 20 and 10. So together, 20 and 10 was 30. So this three that I'm gonna put above the nine in this case, really is representing 30. But when we're working with standard long division algorithm, it's just a three. It just shows as a three and we just multiply it as if it was a three. So the reason that I chose three as my number was because my facts that I was comfortable with were 24 times 20 and 24 times 10, which I knew were 240 and 480. So we did still use 20 and 10 together being 30, but we just showed it differently in the partial quotients algorithm. We first did 20 and then we did 10. So in this case, we are going to be doing 24 times 3. And to show that, I'm going to show it on the side here. 24 times 3, 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So we're going to put our 72 down here. But that is really 720. And if we add the 24 times 20, 24 times 10, so the 240 times 480, or plus 480, excuse me, we're still going to get 720. So the 72 is really 720. So we're still doing 20 times, or 24 times 20, 24 times 10, but together it's 24 times 30. So that's what that three is representing. Then we're gonna subtract 89 minus 72. 9 minus 2 is 7, 8 minus 7 is 1, so we're left with this 17, but then working to the right, we're going to bring down our 5. So now we're trying to decide how many times 24 goes into 175. Again, referring back to our partial quotients algorithm, our 1's values were 5 and 2. When you add 5 and 2 together, you get 7. So we're doing the same thing, 24 times 5 is 120, 24 times 2 is 48, when you add the 120 plus 48, we're getting 168, and when we do 24 times 7, because remember the 5 plus the 2 are the 7 times that we multiply 24, when we do 24 times 7, we will get 168, the same way that we got 168 here. So I'm going to put my 7 up here. We know 7 times 24 is 168. And then when I subtract these values, I end up getting 7. There's no way for 24 to go into 7. There's no number of groups of 24 that would fit into 7. So we know that 7 is our remainder. And up top here, we have how many times we were able to equally put 24 groups of 24 into 895. So our final answer for this is a quotient of 37 with a remainder of 7. So this kind of just shows you how the two are similar. In this case, we broke everything down, all the multiples. So we first did times 20, times 10, times 5, times 2. In this case, in the standard long division, we did 3 or 30, which was both of our tens groups that we multiplied 24. And then we did 7 which were our ones groups of multiples of 4, 5 plus 2. 
So in the end, these two are really similar. Um, partial quotients just tends to break it down further and is helpful because it allows you to use multiplication facts that you already know. So remember, these were our multiplication facts that I already knew. Whereas this one might be a little trickier because there might be some outside math that needs to be going on. If we're not familiar with these multiples, like 24 times 3 I wasn't familiar with, 24 times 7 I wasn't familiar with. But in the end, it does give us the same answer of 37 remainder 7.